There have been some important lessons with volume recently, especially in the S&P 500 market. So I thought I'd just put a quick video together and explain a little bit on how to look at volume. Now there's three things that we need to look at. We need to look at the effort behind the move, what result occurred from that effort, and what context has that effort and that result occurred? Those three things, especially the last one, is very, very important. You can see uh, a normal chart of mine here. We've got the S&P 500, as I said, and below we've got a typical volume histogram with two other lines on it. The top red line here is just a 20-day average of volume. Nothing special about that. It gives us an idea on what any given day is above, below average, and if volume is trending down or trending up. And above that, the cyan line here is two standard deviations of that average volume. And that gives us an idea of whether we've got extreme or ultra high volume occurring. And when that happens, it's a very important time to be paying attention to the market. Now, there's a very good example here. Uh, take a look at this big volume spike up here. You can see it's well through the two standard deviations. So we label this as ultra high volume and it represents a point of time that we should be taking particular focus at. Now, up here, we've got that bar. Now remember, the effort in this particular instance is measured by the volume. So you can see here with the ultra high volume, we've got a lot of effort going into this particular movement on the day. And if we take a look at the day, have a look what's happened. We've probed into new highs and we've closed very weak in the session. So there's a lot of effort. Prices are broken into new highs, but closed very, very weak. Now what that means is sellers are very strong. Lots of effort, lots of selling, prices are unable to break up, and as a result, it's a very, very weak bar. Now, obviously, that's simple to see in hindsight, but you'll see it time and time again when we look at those three things. So first of all, what is the effort? What is the result? And where in context of the broader market has that happened? So let's move forward a few days here. We're going to go through this one day at a time and take a look at what recently happened. You can see here we're back in October, just before the market started to capitulate to the downside. So let's take a look. Now you can see here this date is the 9th of October. We've got a big down session here. The market has dropped 2.1%. We've got a very low close and you can see we've got above average, slightly above average, nothing extreme, but above average volume. So sellers in control here at the moment. And what we want to now keep an eye on is when does that selling uh, stop and when do buyers step in? That's what we're trying to look at here. So let's flick forward one day. You can see now that we've got ultra high volume you can see volume is pushed right up to the top two standard deviation again another big down day losing 1.1 percent and a very low close when we look at it in context of what's happening you can see we're testing a big line of support now the fact that the market has come down and closed at the very lows and done so on high volume People aren't worried about this support level in any way, shape or form. If they were, we would see a higher close. So this support at the moment is not particularly important to players. Let's move forward another day. So again, another big down day. Uh, in this particular instance, we've smashed through that line of support. And again, we've got increased in volume there above average and a very low close. So sellers still dramatically in control, but volume a little bit lower than yesterday. And the day was a little bit wider than yesterday, dropping 1.6% instead of 1.1%. Now, that'll become important in a moment. But at this stage, sellers are still in control. But remember what I said about the context of the market. Look what's happened in three sessions. We've dropped one8 1.1 and 1.6%. So we've dropped very, very quickly in three days on rapidly increasing volume. And obviously what's going on here is some form of capitulation. Let's move forward another day. Alrighty. So we haven't been able to make any further headway to the downside here, but take a look again at the result of the effort and the effort. So again, we've got very high volume above average volume, even though average is tr uh, volume is trending up here, we're still well above average. And we've got a very, very weak close. So even though we didn't make any further downside, what's basically occurred is there's still a lot of sellers around here at the moment, 
We know that because we've got a very low close. But those sellers have not been able to push prices any lower. In fact, as prices tried to bounce, those sellers jumped back in and said, thanks, I'll take that bounce and I'll sell into it. So at this stage, sellers are still in control, but a little bit less so than what they were yesterday. Let's move forward again another day. All right, now this is a very important day and it matches up with what I was talking about on this particular bar up there and this big two standard deviation volume. So remember the three things we need to look at. We need to look at the effort. Effort is measured in volume. You can see here massive volume, well above the two standard deviations. Huge amount of volume, huge amount of effort. What is the result of that effort? Well, we've got a big day down and a big high close. You can see here that the close is well off the lows, extremely off the lows, big wide ranging bar. So a lot of selling pressure going into that, obviously, but the high close means buyers were stepping up to the plate and very, very keen. Now, the last thing we have to look at is in the context of what is occurring in the broader market, which is capitulation. Sellers are panicking. We've gone down stiff and fast in four days, five days, a long, long way. Sellers are capitulating. That's what's going on. Now, as soon as those sellers stop, the market is going to rise because the only thing that's been keeping the market down has been the supply. So today's bar is the first sign the buyers are taking control. Lots of effort and we've got a nice high close. That does not mean the market can't go any lower. What it means is the buyers have stepped up to the plate and they've said, you know what, I'll have a piece of the action down here. Thank you very much. And at this stage, they're showing themselves stronger than the supply in the market. Let's move forward another day here and see what happens. Oh, two days. We'll just go back one day. Now you can see here, um, again, we've got high volume, not as high as yesterday, but we've still got well above average volume. Prices have tried to push down again. But yet again, for the second day running, even though the market has closed unchanged, it has closed well off the low session. So again, the buyers have stepped up. And if you think of a little area down in this zone down here, people are saying, well, if it comes down below 18.50, I'm going to buy it. And that's what they're doing. That's basically the concept behind it. So two high closes there, good volume buyers are now in. All we need for prices to go higher is that selling pressure, that capitulation that we've seen over the last week or two. We just need that to dry up and be done with. And as soon as that occurs, prices will be ready to go up. We flick forward again a day forward. Now we've got an update, the first update for quite some time. And what we've got here is closes off the high of the session. Volume is down. Okay, so there's not a great deal of effort going on. So prices have risen 1.3% on less effort, but we've still got a little bit of a weak close. If we'd had a stronger close, that would have been a very, very positive day on that particular session. But that weak close means there's still a little bit of selling around. And when you think about it logically, People who tried to get out up here and balked, well, they're now getting the bounce and they're saying, well, here's the opportunity to get out. I'm going to take that bounce and I'm going to get out. It's a get out of jail free card. And that's what they're now doing. So good effort there. Don't get me wrong, but still a little bit of selling around. Let's go forward one more day. And this is an exceptional trigger day. You can see here, it's a small range day. Look at the volume, hardly any effort whatsoever. We've almost opened on the low, we've closed on the high. So the result of the day is the market is up 0.9 of a percent, hardly any effort. What does that mean? If there's no effort for prices to go up and in the context of what's occurred, i.e. the capitulation, what it means is sellers are done. They are out, they're finished, they're kaput. If there's no supply in the market, prices can only do one thing, and that's go up. And you can see in the coming days exactly what happens. The market goes up, and you can see here what's happening is our average volume is slowly going down. So we've got this low volume rally, which a lot of people think is bearish, but in the context of the bears have gone, the supply has left the market. The smart money have stepped in down the bottom here and said, you know what, this is a great dip. I'm going to have a piece of this. Thank you very much. And as soon as those sellers are done, which they were done in that area there, 
prices are free to go up and as you can see we just keep pushing up to new high ground so very very bullish price action down in the bottom here and it was all signaled by volume